Yeah, good afternoon everybody. Um, I'm Cornelius. I work at um, a company called LP, um, who work with Mark at Waterloo Uncovered. Um, I'm one of the field work managers there. Um, previously I've worked for Coventry Council, for Oxford, for Wessex, for NAA up north and various other outfits. So I've uh, got reasonably broad experience um, of field work. Um, this, um, so this, this, this afternoon Mark's asked me to talk about well-being in commercial archaeology, which is a subject of about which I know very little, to be perfectly honest. Um, I'll get it, so I'm just trying to get... Yeah, brilliant, yeah. thank you. Um, it's, and considering that I'm a fieldwork manager for a reasonably sized company, um, I ought to know more about it, probably, than I do. Um, how does this... Arrow, arrow, oh, there we go. Yeah, sorry, this, this has been um, built from the, the ruins of a previous, um, a previous presentation. Um, hence, some of the, the, some, hence some of the slides are a bit strange. Um, well-being is, as been pointed out, um, it, it's, a very, it's a very trendy thing to talk about at the moment. It's, it, it's considered very important, um, justifiably so. Um, It's, um, how do I get, oh, I go back like that, brilliant, okay. Um, I looked up from somebody I hope would know more about it than I did, um, how, how the terms was, was defined. Um, the British Safety Council Review has pointed out, as you can see here, that it's, it can be used as a catch-all term, just meaning, you know, anything that's good. Um, well-being is what makes is what makes you happy, um, but how does that how does that apply within commercial archaeology? Um, the the bottle that the, the BSC use is this five um, this five domain model. Um, my slide looks like terrible compared to Liz's. I'm really sorry. Um, but this is what I had to work with. Um, there is health, work, values, principles, collective, social, and personal growth. These are all linked together. They they form a they form a whole, and one feed one feeds into the others. Um, and that is truer, I think, in commercial archaeology than it is in a lot of other professions. Um, people do this because they. They want to do it, they love it, um, and that's why they become involved in it. Um, so the balance between health and work and values, personal growth and collective, the collective social, which is the way that we relate to one another outside of, um, outside of the work environment. So being upstaged. Um, is... Um, yes, it, it, it is, is, is something that you, it's something that we have more, I think, in commercial archaeology than in other, than in other professions. Um, people get into archaeology because they care about it, they want to do it, um, they are enthused about it, um, and that in itself um, is, is a good thing. The, the, the balance between the balance between work and life isn't exactly the same in archaeology as it is in some of the disciplines. Um, right, sorry, I just need to get back there. Bear with me, I don't present at conferences very often, it's not really my thing. Um, the... Sorry, the... Um, I beg your pardon, let me start again here, sorry. Um, you, and what you should okay. do is just do this one, look. It, uh -huh. should. it should. Oh, hang on. Oh, it should, it's not. Yeah. That's bad. Um, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does, thank you. It does, brilliant, right, it's very bad. Um, yeah, so, I had a look at what the BSC lists 
as these domains and the sorts of things that they that they say that they recommend as an employer um, that you should be looking at um, in the in the health category there is physical health physical safety and also mental health um, some of these that some of these things we're very good at um, particularly the physical side of things. Um, I'll get, on, get into that in more detail in a second, but safe working practices um, are something that is taken very seriously nowadays. It wasn't always the case, but that's definitely improved. General physical health, which is something that people, um, which is something that people often cite as a reason for doing the job, um, because you know, you're out in the healthy fresh air, you're, um, you're working in a physical environment, which is, you know, keeping you fit, um, is more of an assumption than a reality sometimes. Um, a lot of the work that people do in archaeology is actually quite repetitive. It can be, um, it can be quite a strain. Um, it can lead to quite severe musculoskeletal injury if you're not careful. Um, so we, we're not necessarily as good at that as we think. Um, mental health, um, there are some factors in archaeology which are very good for this. Um, the, the goals that Liz was talking about earlier on um, from the Waterloo Project, um, the, the stuff that she was talking about in the military about the, the sense of purpose, um, working in a, an environment where you are working with a team, not just the team that you're working with on a particular job, but that you are part of a, a larger, a larger body, a, a larger project, um, does give people a lot of satisfaction. I think when, when it works out well for them. Um, so we got on that. The working environment, which is um, listed as the most important thing um, under work by um, by this report. We generally do not have very ergonomically designed working areas, um, although that that is improving. That's more of an office thing than an outside thing. Job designs, job roles, job quality, workload, and working hours, um, and particularly work-life balance, we are terrible at. Um, we most of us are very interested in archaeology. We care about it, it's something we want to do, and a lot of us tend to live and breathe it, whether we're at work on site or, um, well, spending our day off coming to something like this, um, which is great, um, but it can, it can lead to um, obsessive levels sometimes. And we, I think we do struggle, particularly with field work, we struggle sometimes to find a, a good work-life balance. Um, especially for people who are working away. Um, this is based on conversations that I've had recently. I mean, I'm not in a position where I have to go and work away very much now, but I spent many years doing it. Um, Monday to Thursday would be away from home. Um, and it's, it, it's not always, it's not, a, it's not necessarily a healthy environment to be in long term. But if you want to be, if you want to be involved in non-urban field work, it is really the only model that is available. So that can be a problem. Um, and pay and reward. Now this is something that I think most, most people will recognize. Um, it's pointed out that there are a lot of health promotion activities. There are a lot of, a lot of initiatives um, in the wellbeing world or well-being sphere or whatever you want to call it, where organisations will try and promote well-being as a, as a thing which can be um, ordered and distributed to the staff, um, such as um, free fruit, which is the, an, um, an example which is used several times in this report, um, cycling to work schemes, giving people health insurance, that sort of thing. And uh, these things are not bad things in themselves, they're, they're good, but Something else, something which comes up over and over again, is that um, the work itself has to be central to the conversation about well-being. Um, which doesn't necessarily mean 
that you have to be doing work that you enjoy. Um, it means fair wages, good relation managers and colleagues. Jobs should be designed well and responsibility, workload and working hours and particularly career development need to be things which are addressed as part of the conversation about well-being. Um, there is a tendency to take well-being out of everything else and say we will have somebody who deals with this um, but if you want happy staff they need to they need to be paid well they need to be looked after um, they need to be given the they need to be given the freedom to look after themselves and promote the idea of what they want to do themselves they they need to have a path through to achieve the goals that they have and so there's nothing wrong with giving people free bananas, but it won't. It will not. That will not make this. That will not make the the well-being thing go away. That doesn't solve it. Um, sorry, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Um, there are. So there are. Broadly speaking, two two aspects to. Um, to well-being, as far as I can, as far as I can interpret it, I'm sure that there are plenty of people who will argue about this, which is fine. Um, but remember, I'm a bit new to it. There's the physical side of things, um, where you need to keep people safe. You need to provide them with decent facilities on sites. They need to have accommodation when they're whether they, when they're away, um, which is acceptable. I.e., not saying five people to the, a room in a B and B. Um, for weeks and weeks and on end, um, and they need to have a safe welfare um, working environment. Um, <coughs> expectations and um, expectations and realities of the way that people do um, do the, of the way that people will be working um, are often um, don't don't always mesh. Let's say. Um, when we're working outside, this is what we this is what we hope it's going to be like. Um, this is you, isn't it, Aaron? Um, <laughs> now, that is a very pleasant working environment to be in. Although I hope that you'd got sun cream on. Yes. <laughs> um, there is, but that is a nice that's a nice comfortable environment. Um, the level of PPE provided here. Yeah? is entirely appropriate to the activity um, and it looked as if you were having a very nice time that day which is which is what we want you know um, ah, um, you know what actually I'll go back to that the the reality and this is you again I'm sorry I didn't I didn't pick on you particularly but I thought that this illustrated very nicely that that the reality is that very often you're going to be standing wrapped up in the rain outside um, that is a that's a theme that runs through the conversation I think about well-being in archaeology the difference between what you're expecting to do and what you actually end up doing so I am going somewhere with this honestly um, PPE though and I all swear to God I didn't realize that this was David Cameron when I say <laughs> um, can anybody tell me what's wrong with that photograph Specifically, what's, what's, what's wrong with his PPE? He's not wearing gloves. He's dealing, he's handling mortar and he's not wearing gloves in contravention of the CITB regulation. Um, well, it's a recommendation actually, it's not the law. So it, it is important to wear the right PPE. Um, yeah, I think this, I think, is a, is a good example of somebody in a realistic working environment. Um, with the right level of PPE on, it's a bit damp, so he's got his waterproof trousers on, uh, he's comfortable and happy. This is an example of the lunacy of PPE when it is enforced in a red regime um, across a lot of different sites, not all of which, um, to, to not all of which it's appropriate to. Um, I won't mention who the client is in this particular case, I expect some of you recognise it. But here you have people in the middle of a field, in the middle of summer, um, wrapped from head to foot in orange plastic with hard hats, gloves and goggles on. Um, and there is not a machine within a mile of them in any direction. Um, so 
that is a good example of the, what the way <laughs> that it's good to have it's good to have proper PPE. It's good to have more of it sometimes. But just saying that you have to have everything all the time is obviously wrong. So you need to you need to be careful of that. Um, this is not a site that I worked on personally. Um, this is actually. Uh, this is supposed to re represent an old-fashioned site hut, and it's possibly a bit harsh. Um, the site, site accommodation has improved massively um, over the past few years, but um, over the past 20, 25 years, I guess. Um, we don't generally sit in leaky cabins in the cold, huddled round um, a gas burner, um, taking turns to you know, put our hands over next to the kettle to keep warm. Um, Although the modern alternatives are not perhaps as glamorous, um, they are a lot more comfortable. Um, Volvo, not necessarily. Um, they need. Um, so, what people expected of the, the field work side, the sort of physical side of the job, is that they will be out in the fresh air, that the job is interesting, um, that they'll dig up cool things, and that they'll get to publish the results. And I don't know how many of you here would relate to this, but the, the healthy fresh air you do get plenty of. And that part was true. The job is interesting some of the time. It's not always interesting. A lot of it is repetitive um, and it can be quite dull. Um, but there is always the possibility that you you know the next job will be dealing up some nice stuff. Um, and the biggest thing that I've come across because I've been talking to our staff about this and talking to people in the wider archaeological community is that we all had an assumption when we started that we would dig things and that we would then eventually we'd be in the position where we were writing them up um, that would be um, we, you know we, we would be the person who was in charge of the job not the company necessarily but the um, that there would be an opportunity for greater um, uh, the greater responsibility for more control over what you're doing and how it's done. And that is not always the case. Um, a lot of people, it, uh, the experience of a lot of people is that they, they will end up either stuck out on site at low levels of responsibility for their career, or that when they do move up, that they're expected to do essentially administrative tasks, HR type tasks, um, look after accommodation, look after HR, um, look after costings and things, and they still don't get to write of anything. Um, and that can be quite demoralizing. Um, that is something that um, has come up quite often in the conversation that I've had with the people working for us, and as I say, with, with other people as well. So yeah, sorry. Um, so that's, that's what, the, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm speaking of being repetitive and dull. Um, however, there is a lot of good stuff in the job. Um, when you are working on a good site, it is really good. It is a wonderful job to do. Um, there is... Okay, sorry, I'll hurry up. Um, I'll just get back to that. Um, it's... We are, we are very, we're very... We've been very slow at adopting um, an idea of well-being at work being important. Um, because I think we we expect it to be addressed by the fact that wow we're in this great job that everyone loves. So all of these all, there are all of these things that we think of as the positives of the job, and we think well that's that, that's taking care of all that. We're in this great big gang, and we all care about the archive, and we're all adding to the greater sum of human knowledge. Um, and as long as you know, as long as everybody's kept you know kept dry and kept kept warm, then everything will be all right. Um, but that that is not necessarily the case. Um, as I say, there are there are a lot of positives to the job, um, but the looking at the we looking at well being is something that's in its infancy. I think in commercial archaeology, and we um, we need to do more of it and, and work harder at it. Um, it's, this might be something which is being addressed much much more in other organisations. I don't know. Um, it's, um, I, I, I hope so, um, but I, I'm certainly going to need to put a lot more work into it, personally. Um, yeah, um, I've stolen 
something which I saw written on Twitter the other day. Um, I don't know if anyone else has ever felt this. Um, it's more mundane than you can imagine. And it's like, I thought... <laughs> <laughs> but having said all that, it is a great job. Um, okay, that's, that's what I've got. <laughs>